Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. InshaAllah Allah Zawajal dress us from the light of the Shuhadai Karbala inshaAllah. Did we, we didn't recite their names inshaAllah. Not yet. Not yet. Let's do the, the madad for Imam Hussain and the 72 Shuhada, the 72 Shuhadai Karbala inshaAllah. Do we have that also? The people who are following on the app and we're all following on the app, all the names are under there. The section is redesigned on the app that every month will have its own button and then in the button of all months, all the months are there. So in the app you go to the face is click on Muharram and then has their names of the 72 Shuhada Karbala. And also it was a tradition from Shaykh Abdul Faizi Dagestani but the Sallallahu Siru that for Ashura to give the qurban, to sacrifice the sheep, uh, two sheep depending upon the people's ability and they distribute the meat to the poor. We've ordered many qurbans so that uh, to distribute that meat to the needy and we have a program in, in Pakistan also going and a program in Los Angeles, Asim will be, will be giving away some, some food and some needed things for the homeless there. So alhamdulillah, this is a time in which for us to be charitable, to be giving, to be doing things if you want to do with other places or do it yourself. But it's a time in which Allah is granting immense gates of forgiveness and we're asking to enter in through those gates, not with our aman. We didn't pray or fast or do anything to impress Allah but that He forgive us and, and by the, the gate of forgiveness and intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rabbi that we're coming with our ishq and our muhabbat and that let us enter the, the gate and to love what Prophet and loves of his companions, of his family and that to understand that they sacrificed themselves, they sacrificed everything and put themselves into difficulty, Ya Rabbi grant us from what You dressed and blessed them with. Let us to share in that blessing by remembering tonight. We said even when we want the lights of these holy souls and we bring a birthday cake or we bring a food or water or halwa for a sad day we bring sweets and, and halwa to give to people or haleem a soup to give to people, why? is to share in this blessing that I can't achieve what you achieved and through the immense difficulty that you put yourself through for any person to be of such a noble state, the grandson of Sayyidina Muhammad and to be slaughtered by the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad not from outside forces but from Muslims and that his entire family was slaughtered, his children, grandchildren, everyone was slaughtered before his eyes and then he entered into the battlefield and gave his life for that reality, for that love of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rabbi we can't achieve this level of faith. And that's why Sayyid the shuhada the one whom signs for all those whom are asking their hearts to open, its, its signator is Imam al Husayn That he has to sign that grant my heart to be an open heart, grant my eyes and the eyes of my heart to see. Then we come to the door and ask that for this love that we have, share this blessing that Allah gave to you share it with us. So we bring the sweets, we bring ourselves, we bring water, we do anything we can just to remember. And Mawlana Shaykh said that on these nights at least shed a tear for them. That, Ya Rabbi how much people writing emails and I'm sad, I'm this and this, this my kid is not feeling well, my, my spouse is not feeling well, life is not doing good for me and you can sense how much they're crying in their emails, how much they have sadness. Before we were always sad for ourselves and the, the sad life that we live, think about the sadness of these great souls. 
that did we shed a tear for them, did we think about them, did we understand what type of difficulties they went through. And then Mawlana Shaykh said, that one tear that you can shed for them, it becomes the door, to, door of intercession. That the angels will write, Ya Rabbi they, they, they cried for these souls that you have immense love for. And they brought their sincerity and their love, grant them to be dressed from that, grant them to be forgiven their sins and wrongdoings. Grant them that you be happy with them and that when Allah is happy with the servant, He dresses them, blesses them. Then make every mushkil, qusha, every difficulty in our life goes away by remembering them, remembering their sacrifices. Every time you're in difficulty and crying for your life, Imagine how Sayyid al-Shuhada, how his children, how the grandchildren, how the companions and fadain, those who came to give their lives to be of service to him and never left his side. And see how they felt in the field of death when imminent death was before them and they witnessed the death of all those whom they love. Now if they say death is coming by invisible plague, people are locking themselves in their rooms taping the door, hiding, putting pillows and going under their cover and trying to escape death. They won't go out, they won't breathe, they won't do anything. Even if they could they could hold their breath and not take another breath. But look at the character of, of these nights and these events that whatever your fate is in life, you face it. If Allah has written for you to die tomorrow, all you want to do and hide in your room and in your home, it's not going to help you. If Allah wants you dead, you're dead. If Allah wants you alive, you may walk through the valley of death and I fear not for my Lord is with me. And those whom they don't fear if they have good character because they're happy and content to meet their Lord. If your character is fishy and your character and maybe your faith is not great and maybe you're doing things that you know Allah is not going to be pleased with, then it's understandable why you don't want to meet Allah And you're going to hide in many rooms and behind many pillows and, and you'll live a life of hiding. But this is a time of great faith that coming and for us to remember that how he faced and all the people said, are you going into that battlefield? You know those people who are calling you for da'wah, we know them as treacherous people. And the, the companions were saying in Medina and the, 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 the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad were warning him, don't go. How much Prophet loves you, don't go. Those are dangerous people to be dealing with, they're treacherous and traitors. And he says, whatever my faith is, it's my duty to go. He said, at least don't go with your family because they're going to be slaughtered. You're entering in, into the, you know, the oceans of difficulty. And he said as an example for us, whatever my faith is, I have to face it. And I step into that, if that's what Allah wants for me, there must be a reality and a secret and a ni'mat and an immense blessing in that reality. And that's what's important and that's what is, is tariqah teaching. That when this great personality, this immense soul steps into a field of immense difficulty, we say, I to sabr, he is, he is the sign of the reality of Nabi Mustafa how fragrant, how loving, how beatific is Imam Hussain That this love and ishq of Nabi Mustafa only can dress its full reality upon his soul by ayat al sabr. Not the sabr that we have when people yell at us and don't yell back. Or people insult you and you don't insult back. But he gives us an example that he didn't come to fight and he came to intercede for the nation. He was called to teach and he came to teach and instead the people wanted to kill him. His delight that you have 
they'll never take baya to us as long as you're around because you talk and you have a magnetism and you have an attraction that people are attracted to you and we want them to take baya to us. And he said, I'm sorry there's nothing I can do about that, I can't take baya with you because I don't believe that you're the one to take that baya with. And as a result Allah described, although they wish to extinguish your light they can never extinguish it. Means the immense reality of facing the faith and facing what Allah has written and the immense reality that awliyaullah come to teach us that 72 shuhada, 72 who passed away and that's the exact number that Prophet described that my nation will have deviated into so many groups that there'll be 72 groups that have deviated into the wrong direction and there'll be one, one group that is on the correct direction. And then you find for the family of Prophet is one Imam Husayn as salam and 72 companions who martyred themselves and gave themselves in the way of the love of Imam Husayn as salam which was the way of the love to gain Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ's love because they wanted the love and the affection of Prophet ﷺ. And awliyaullah came into our lives and taught us that each one that died will intercede for one of the groups that has gone astray and they are grand intercessors. And this was the gift that Imam Husayn ﷺ gave for his grandfather that I accept this faith not because I'm going to let these petty people to slaughter my family and myself, they had power. They had power of all awliyaullah from the jinn and from the ins at their disposal they could have flipped the world upside down. Just with their hand movement the heads of people could have come off. But to accept the faith and know the hikmah and the wisdom that this, this dying and this type of death and this difficulty that you impose upon yourself, you will have an immense account with Allah And that's immense learning. When somebody wrongs you and does horrifically bad and unjust and un-Islamic things against you and you hold your tongue against them, you hold your hand from harming them, there's an immense reward from Allah Nothing is lost, nothing is unaccounted for. That if you had opened your tongue and come against them, millions may have lost their faith. And the fact that you stay silent and quiet during oppression and difficulty, this is the gift from Imam and Husayn teaching. That what you do, do for Allah not to take your rights from people, but you want your reward from Allah there must be a wisdom and remaining quiet, remaining good. He didn't come for battle, he didn't come armoured with men to destroy the fellow Muslims, he came to teach. And he said, if they're choosing to destroy me then I accept that fate, means he will be rewarded by Allah And when Allah asks these types of souls, these immense souls that what is it that you want, you were done so much harm and wrong to yourself, to your family, to your grandchildren, to your children, what do you want from them? And they're going to say, Ummati, 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 like, like my grandfather that I want to intercede for my nation. I want to carry that burden and intercede for those who went wrong. That's why they don't curse anyone. They're not in the business of cursing, they were in the business of healing and interceding for people. We pray that they intercede for us Ameen. and that they take away all our difficulties and all our sadnesses and that they inherit from their good character, their love, their patience. We started by saying ayat is sabr because the way in which they died it requires sabr to witness what they had to witness 
Allah address them with patience, with immense lights, immense blessings. And the name of Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mustafa is the key to sabr. That when Prophet wants to dress with the, tro- the chosen and fragrant name Muhammad al-Mustafa means he fragranced that soul with a beautific fragrance and then Allah dresses and completes the ni'mat and grants that soul sabr. So their ayah to sabr, they are the signs of patience and firmness and faith. And that's why it's so important to love them, so important to recognize these nights, so important to recognize how all nations were saved from difficulty. And the most amazing saving, because children will ask that, well you told me a story about how Adam salam was forgiven, you go from the levels of the heart. Sayyidina Adam when he fell from grace his du'a was accepted on Ashura. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam ship landed for safety on Ashura. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam in the levels of the heart the fire of Nimrod was made cool and peaceful on the day of Ashura. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam was granted a najad and taken from Pharaoh's land the ocean parted and he went to the shores of safety and granted his nation was granted their lands and their freedom on Ashura. Sayyidina Isa salam was raised into the heavens on Ashura and Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mustafa entered into the city of lights on Ashura. Means the lights of Nabi Muhammad al-Mustafa, Nur al-Muhammadi was open for all universes by the movement of Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mustafa into Medina to Munawwara. Means everybody reaches the reality after Prophet enters first to dress that reality upon creation. And then the grand intercession of the Holy Family comes to grant a najad for that nation, the most cherished and beloved nation of Allah the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad its ultimate dress and ultimate forgiveness is then the intercession of Imam al Husayn as salam that sacrificed myself for your nation and 72 of my family and companions will sacrifice themselves for your nation and for all of your nation that will go wrong. InshaAllah Allah accept their intercession and that they intercede for all the bad actions and bad character and they symbolize the one whom is on the right path then must have the character of Imam al Husayn as salam in which his life is to sacrifice for people, sacrifice for the nation, sacrifice with good character, love and muhabbat. He sets the example, his fight was not come and start beating people, he didn't come with armies into, into Karbala and into Baghdad. He came with a caravan of his family to come and to teach. Anyone who thinks they're on the right path and they say that they are the one, the one group that didn't go astray, did you exhibit any of those characteristics? You talk, you talk softly, you have a character of love, you came to intercede, you didn't come for violence, you, you came to, to give of yourself and face your fate and that's the characteristic. Anyone who thinks they're on that one group then they must exhibit the characteristics of Imam al Husayn as salam. And it's not necessarily the people who are beating their chest and saying that they love Imam al Husayn as salam. They may have also lost the message, they're too busy cursing everyone to have understood the real reality of that message. This is not about joining a group and smacking yourself. Mawlana Shaykh said that they hit themselves because they were the most treacherous and they were the ones and their descendants were the ones who closed the doors and the windows to supporting Imam al Husayn You know the type where they come and they say they're with you and they run away and they leave you. They asked him to come and to teach and when he showed up they shut their doors and said, we don't know who you are, we don't want to come out. And they left him to be obliterated by these wild creatures, these other people. 
So they hit themselves probably because they're descendants of those people who betrayed Imam al Hussein. This is not about that. This is about the characteristic in which you face your fate and you come with an intention of love and muhabbat. And when people harm you and do wrong to you, you don't open your mouth and you don't use this position and this camera and any authority that you think you have for anything other than the propagation of love of Sayyidina Muhammad They don't take the pulpit and use it for themselves, they don't take the position to go and, and, and to use for themselves. Imam al Hussein is teaching, no everything is for muhabbat, self-sacrifice and to show the way with good intention. And inshaAllah Allah dress us, bless us and all those who are listening and, and loving to remember this life, remember the life of Imam al Hussein salam, listen to some of the nasheeds about the love of Sayyidina Imam al Hussein salam, not about anything that coming against companions and entering into cursings and all, all of that's garbage, that's, that's complete rubbish. This is all about love and thinking and connecting our hearts with that beatific soul and you visualize it like a desert and in this desert there's a black tent. Asking Prophet that let me to, to enter into the tent of your family, let me to sit with them in their time of sacrifice and in their time of difficulty. That what did they feel? What did the women feel that the men are going to be slaughtered and that they're going to be abused and they're going to be paraded and humiliated? And these are all the family of Sayyidina Muhammad Imagine the people who say that, I'm the grandson of this, I'm the son of this person, I'm a special person, you should think of me as a special person. And they think they're entitled to something because of their name and the name of who you are and we're all descendants of Imam al Hussein salam and Sayyidina Muhammad above all. And that name and your family lineage. It's not that you're entitled to anything but that you have a responsibility to carry their way and their example. It's not an entitlement but it's a, it's a responsibility and if you truly inherit you will be carrying difficulties in which people will abuse you, people will continuously attack you. And this is the example, this is the way that they put within our hearts to follow that let's think of their night, asking to enter into their tent, asking to sit with them, to be with them in this moments of grief from tonight to tomorrow is the day of Ashura. We have the adab on the app for Ashura, how to shower, how to put coal upon the eyes, how to pray the, the prayers and the sunnah prayers that need to be prayed. Allahu wa ni'mal al wakeel how to recite the seven times the du'a and then you do all of that before the maghrib. And that asking Allah to dress us from these lights and from the immense sacrifice that Imam al Hussein made at this time, Ya Rabbi let me just by sitting here connecting my heart to be dressed by these lights and blessed by these lights and most of all grant me good character and to be with the people who exhibit good character, not backbiting, not lying, not spreading rumours, not spreading gossip and lies. That in this time of dajjal and time of difficulty grant us to be with the people of muhabbat and love inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.